How's everyone doing? Good, Dan. How about yourself? Good. Let's see. My... Let's see. Recording's on. I'll send everybody a link to the agenda. So go ahead and sign in. If you're um, new, uh, you can leave your uh, name uh, blank and we'll call on you when we go around and sort of, uh, you know, go through a bit of a, a roll call. Uh, we'd love to have you introduce yourself. Uh, if you don't have anything that you'd like to update folks, uh, let's put a little parenthetical uh, no update, and uh, I won't bother you or put you on the spot or drag you out of uh, uh, the other meeting you're in at the same time. My plan for today is to open up a bit of a discussion. Um, you know, I have been, you know, sort of waylaid with, uh, you know, some um, some changes in in my um, my career and and uh, job and you know, taking care of that stuff. Uh, so, you know, Sarah and JJ have. have been covering a lot of stuff uh, and you know I'm getting back into the motion of uh, doing cherry things so uh, first and foremost if um, you know our norms have evolved in a way that I'm not uh, you know following let me know because uh, uh, you know we've, we've been doing great uh, it's a nice you know not not to uh, have to facilitate all, all the meetings and uh, you know I want to make sure that we're uh, maintaining consistency um, not me just, you know, uh, grinding along, uh, I can grind out, uh, a meeting. Um, so, you know, let, let me, let me know. Uh, I want to have a, a bit of a discussion since we don't have anything pressing on the agenda, uh, around the role of operators in uh, our cloud native systems, kind of, uh, open things up. Uh, we have a, a uh, new end user group that is forming um, and, you know, I was instrumental in forming a similar group in, um, in the Node.js uh, ecosystem uh, that's been, uh, you know, really, you know, beneficial and, you know, in that effort, um, you know, we also, um, you know, formed a uh, sort of crisis management team um that uh helped us deal with uh gamer gators uh and folks coming in from uh outside of the community and uh, uh either just causing havoc or um you know uh trying to to, to game the, the system or um you know to uh, other things that you know aren't in line with, with the overall objective of uh the effort and uh you know uh we found that very effective and, uh, you know, there may be an opportunity as we, um, you know, continue to grow this, this community to explore some like that too. I think I see you have no update, uh, but this is your first meeting. Uh, if I call on you, will you uh, be comfortable introducing yourself? If not, uh, don't worry about it. I won't call on you. No need to be on the spot. We'd like to get to know you. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, kick off the intros. Uh, Michael, you want to uh, get us started? Yeah, sure. Um, so we're going through the process of reviewing the CFP for the Cloud Native Security Day at KubeCon EU. Uh, I want to say we have about 54 submissions. Uh, those, some of those do include capture the flag submissions, which we still kept open, but we're not going to do a capture the flag, but we wanted to 
kind of captured different ideas so that we could use those for uh, possibly KubeCon Boston. And we have uh, about um, seven reviewers. So uh, that's also an increase from this, the three reviewers that we had last time. So we'll have a little bit more data points to make better decisions around um, um, what talks are gonna be accepted. And then um, hopefully we're gonna have a meeting or we're going to have a meeting on Friday and hopefully we'll have the final schedule uh, ready to go by then and then publish shortly thereafter as well. So stay tuned for that. Great. Um, so, you know, so we put a, an agenda item uh, on for, for next week that we'll you know, review that out and maybe, you know, dive a little bit deeper into the outcomes there. Yeah, sure. Love to. Cool. Um, so I realized uh, that I, I didn't uh, peer pressure anybody into taking notes. Um, so uh, we usually like to have two. Thank you, Justin, for stepping in. Yeah, uh, and Taking on uh, that, if, if anyone else uh, you know, would like to, to help Justin, especially uh, while Justin's talking, uh, you know, we like to have you know, two scribes so we uh, you know, can, can capture everything and can participate. All right, back to the agenda. Um, Justin Capos. Yes, um, I have a couple quick uh, updates this week. Uh, one of which is um, that I've still been trying to get a bit of movement on the uh, mock-up of the changes to the landscape. Um, I've talked to Amy about that yesterday, uh, but I think maybe hearing it from someone other than me, because I feel like I've pestered her now about like eight times about this incident, this need. Um, might help to move that along a little bit, although maybe give her a day or so. Um, and also, uh, mostly we've just been dealing with a variety of things related to uh, Tough and in Toto and stuff. Uh, tough adoption within the Python community is uh, always kind of chugging along. Um, we spend a surprising amount of time um, explaining to people that this transparency log idea, this idea of having what's basically a blockchain or, you know, a permission blockchain. Um, if you don't like the word blockchain, then a permission set of servers that Google runs uh, in, in some cases, um, like keep a history has been something that um, it seems really odd to us, but a lot of people are kind of starting to, or we've had heard people kind of confusing this um, and thinking it does things that it doesn't do, like um, actually provide security other than just detection of things. Um, so if, you know, I, uh, we've been trying to get the word out about that and, and make sure that uh, people don't kind of get um, suckered into, into taking something that doesn't give them the properties that they want. I, I attached your, your blog post to the minutes as I had it around anyway, about the transparency logs. Yeah, that's great. great. That's uh, Trishank and Marina, two, two people. Uh, Trishank used to be my PhD student, Marina currently is. Um, and I, I disagree with some very minor things in there, but um, it's, I think, a good post and makes a point pretty well. So thanks. Um, Kapos, I, I think your consternation um, you know, comes uh, is, is in line with the topic that, that I'm trying to sort of tee up for, for today uh, around the role of operators. Uh, you know, a, a lot of what we're building in our cloud native systems are, you know, automation and sort of, um, you know, ease of whatever. Um, and, um, you know, there's behind some of that, a, uh, you know, I think a misconception that, uh, there, the, you know, we eliminate uh, operators. You know, we, we've lifted and shifted so much of the data center out of you know that sort of operations into um, you know into the cloud. Uh, but still, you know that 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 new infrastructure in you know our our, our cloud native world needs to be operated. And uh, you know, I, I think the 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 types of roles. Um, that exist there uh, are just uh, you know um, not well enough defined, not well enough understood, especially not at scale. Um, and uh, you know, 
uh, we'll all be better off if we begin to uh, you know wrangle you know the, the human side of that uh, and um, you know uh, try to to, to uh, introduce more clarity there. Cormac? Um, so I got elected onto the TOC uh, last week. So um, I'm. Congrats. Oh, you muted yourself. Oops, sorry. Um, yeah, so I guess also, um, uh, I, I guess I'll probably be involved in the TOC interface with this group as well. So I'm. Um, as well. So yeah, I'm sure I'll talk to you in that capacity as well. Brilliant. Looking forward to it. All right. Dancing, dancing mutes. Um, Pradik, uh, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, welcome to Seek Security. What's your background? Sure. Uh, are you guys able to hear me? Yes. Yeah, myself, uh, Pratik Lotia. Uh, I'm a principal architect at Charter Communications, which is an internet service provider. Uh, we're starting uh, to work on you know, Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes architecture, dealing with various CNIs, uh, service mesh policy and configuration. So I, I represent more uh, the security aspect of it. Uh, so that's why I'm here to see uh, what you know value, what, what things are going on in the working group, and if there's anything uh, value I can add to it. Awesome. Well, good to have you on board. Thank you. Uh, uh, Kapil, would... Hey, uh, I am a uh, open source technologist at, uh, at Amazon and uh, currently hanging out with the SIG uh, because uh, I have a project that I started with my former employer, uh, Capital One, called Cloud Custodian, that we're trying to, to get through the assessment process to go before the talk for an incubation uh, type of event. So um, I've been hanging out on open source for 20 plus years and uh, always, I'm tired of my data being leaked. So anything that we can do to improve security in the cloud, I'm fully in favor of. Um, <laughs> beyond that, uh, more tactically, um, I've been looking at the assessment issue and it's sort of been I feel like it's been kicking around for a few months without any real movement and the last two weeks it's been waiting for someone to sign off on the reviewers so trying to figure out what we need to do to get that done awesome well you're at the right place for that i will uh uh help you push that over the the edge and uh, I, know, I know you know from toc meetings that you've been uh engaged there so uh um you know call us out um you know worst case escalate to um the chairs i am one of them and uh we'll uh you know make sure that you know we get you through that process for you yeah, Rich, by the way and this is just a point for anybody else who's in a similar situation um raising uh things like that in the slack channel or on the issues related to the project are really good ways to do it i don't know if that was done here in mist it could entirely have been but um just just let us know uh, that things are lagging because without you know we get the we get pinged when things happen like that but we don't get pinged when things haven't happened and should be uh, so super dumb That's a good point uh, last, uh, you know, last comment from on that issue was from you Justin on on can can one of the chairs review so uh, I, you know, I thought I'd give it a, a little bit of time but uh, I will go ahead and drop the issue number into uh, Slack in case anyone has a chance. I've, I've put it in the minutes as well, but uh, it's 307. But um, are you based in Seattle? Capital? I am in Seattle at the moment, but uh, I'm drilling out of DC. Okay. Um, I was just, I was just passing, I'm going to be in Seattle next week. I might, if you were around, I'd say hello. Because I, Volunteer to chair this. Ships um, passing the night. <laughs> awesome. 
All right. Well, thanks everybody for their check-ins and the uh, uh, updates. Uh, now uh, over to uh, SIGs and working groups. Anyone from um, you know Kubernetes, uh, the policy subgroup, um, security audit working group, or uh, Mark? Anything from uh, um, the, the broader community in NIST? It's a little off topic. This is from the IEEE uh, DevOps. If I turn my camera on, yeah. From the IEEE DevOps community, they've asked me to try to crosswalk that draft with the IEEE reliability standard. So I'm trying to put that off for the post public release draft that's going to happen in a month or two so that I don't have to do it now because I don't have the time. But I'd love to get feedback from anybody who has got opinions on connecting up DevOps with resilience issues. Obviously, cloud fits into this too, but it's uh, not the primary focus of this. But you know, I'm interested in anybody's opinions on this. I can uh, get you a copy of the standard if you need to, if you don't have access through your institution. Then from here. Mark, you know, in, in, in that, uh you know, sort of uh, validation process. How much is is the the process leaning on you know automation and standards versus uh, operators and subject matter experts? Hmm. Um, if I understand the question right, it's really about trying to take the existing standards work, explain what DevOps is, how it changes the existing standards. I don't think. There's the kind of uh, ops-centric focus you would get with SRE. That, by the way, was mm -hmm. the, you know, the Google SRE approach is somewhat orthogonal to this in many respects because it's not software product release driven. Uh, that's important mm -hmm. for ops. So I think we're really not mm -hmm. tackling that, even though I made several presentations to the group, I didn't really get any traction about that. So I think the draft standard won't say much about that. Is that, is that the gist of your question? It, it, it answers my question, um, you know, though, though it isn't what I'm sort of pokey at. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> it, you know, it, I, it, from what I, what I uh, take away is it, you know, sort of starts and ends at standards um, and, you know, doesn't quite, um, you know, connect back to how those standards are applied and, um, you know, what's missing for, uh, the, the the operators might need to sort of you know, take into account. Yeah, I think you're really touching on a broader problem across all of the SDOs. Um, you know, how do you get tech transfer from the standards and, and vice versa? Because you mm -hmm. get a, a weird population of people with the time to work in the standards. So in some standards, right. you have very right. IBM dominated scenario because they pay the people to mm -hmm. show up there. I guess that happens with Google to some extent here and there. Uh, but also a lot of uh, folks vary in their late career with a lot of, you know, trying to make their mark in a discursive environment. <clears throat> and that, those folks tend to be a little d at some distance from current practice. So that's the sociology of the standards organization is a little, a bit of an impediment to tech transfer. Yeah, in the, in the DevOps yeah. group, <clears throat> I think we've made some traction there. I'm concerned that the document is going to be really big uh, for example it's taken iso work on the from the test community and trying to apply that to devops automation and also to connect it up with quality and risk management and all of these things are pretty deep disciplines in their own and to trying to devops size mm -hmm. all of these things is really trying to come to terms with a thing that really hasn't evolved in current practice yet so yeah, this is a, a large topic. Yeah, we could talk about this for a whole mm -hmm. meeting, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a big issue, and I, I think we're um, you know potentially undervaluing it. I think those of us who uh, you know may have a little bit more experience, you know, under fire, um, may have more appreciation for it, and just sort of. Uh, a natural expectation that that's the uh, you know part of the the process um but those who you know haven't uh you know sort of uh had that opportunity 
uh, don't have the appreciation and, you know, a lot of what we're building is abstracting those things out or automating uh, those things. Um, so, you know, we, we aren't placing an assumption that, uh, you know, we're going to need subject matter experts for uh, those systems to be successful in the future. Right. Uh, that's a good summary. And, you know, just to really evangelize this even further for this audience, if you look, if you try to fast forward five or 10 years and where this automation is going to go, security becomes in part at least AI versus AI. And the extent to which those algorithms require deep subject matter specialization, say to automate the generation of test plans for things like two-factor authentication or for uh, testing the resilience of distributed systems that have part IoT, part concentrator, part cloud-based operations, these require you know, both siloed expertise, necessarily siloed, not right. siloed right. by fiat or org chart, but just because to become a specialist in those things, you have to right. become steeped in it. Uh, so building test cases that work across them is a big challenge. So yeah, this, this is a problem we're gonna face. Uh, and in an equally siloed way, the adversaries are going to, you know, architect their own approaches to this. They're going to leverage the same open source tools that we're using to implement our own countermeasures. So, uh, you know, at the same time as we're, you know, embracing an open community to what secure our systems, we're also providing them the tools to combat us, you know, to offset these yep. safeguards. So these, these alternative perspectives on, uh, on security writ large beyond the issues that you're addressing, you know, is, something we kind of have to have in the back of our minds at all times. Okay. Erica, I saw you switch cameras. Did you have an update? Uh, I just linked in the doc that for the Kubernetes working yes. policy working group, we're kind of discussing a policy violation kind of standard across so that we, different mm. projects can plug in um, and have the output be readable. So I linked to the doc if people, especially from more policy related projects, would be interested in chiming in and contributing slash integrating with it. That's all I've got. Um, does, I, I'm, I'm going to beat this one to death today. Sorry. <laughs> does, uh, you know, the, the workflow that you're building for policy violation, um, you know, begin to approach, uh, you know, sort of unknowns or how, uh, you know, we, we sort of intercede in, in an incident or is there an expectation that automated systems are going to, uh, you know, take our output and, you know, address most of the problems? Yeah, it's a little bit agnostic on purpose so that we're kind of, there's a lot of different kind of plugins and projects, the Caverno, the OPA with Gatekeeper, et cetera, that are kind of approaching the policy landscape within Kubernetes in different ways. And we kind of just want to get some parts on the same page so that we can kind of have, especially so that users can switch between certain aspects of them. So it's a, we're trying to keep it pretty minimal and not prescribe much at all except that you know the output is human readable and understandable at the least <laughs> Bonus, <right? laughs> code 512 to 13. yeah nice i look forward to reviewing that okay so uh Thanks again for uh, the uh, ping on Capel on on uh, uh, Cloud Custodian uh, needing sign off. I will uh, circle the um, the co chairs and make sure we uh, wrap those up this week. I uh, don't see Brandon on today. The KubeCon EU deep dive. Is there uh, any updates on that? I'm going to do join late. Amy, are you on the phone? I saw you in the dock. I know he had mentioned wanting to do something related to the landscape 
discussion presentation there. Um, and I know he's been thinking about it, but I haven't talked to him recently. Okay. And we'll come back to that. Okay. Uh, so in this, you know, second part, uh, I'd like to to open, you know, this discussion, uh, you know, a little bit further around, uh, you know, the role of operators in cloud native systems. Uh, we we uh, approached this several times. Um, you know, I, I've I've been talking to a bunch of folks, um, you know, across the ecosystem and. Uh, you know, there's this interesting sort of duality of, uh, you know, especially around Kubernetes, where, um, you know, we're we're both trying to, you know, standardize it and abstract it away at the same time, um, and you know, both of those things are are needed, um, but you know, what one of the drivers that I see of you know, wanting to abstract it away is, um, you know, Kubernetes is hard and uh, I don't want, I don't know enough about it to, you know, effectively manage it. Um, so, you know, make it go away uh, and, you know, just make it easy for me. Um, and, you know, the reality of, of that is, you know, folks are, you know, leaping over, you know, necessary steps of understanding and integrating, um, you know, new systems with, uh, you know, tons of distilled complexity. You know, we've lifted and shifted, uh, you know, the entire uh, workflows of, you know, data centers and the operators in the data centers that, um, you know, have, uh, you know, had, physical abstractions that, that, you know, enabled us to, you know, keep things secure, keep things, uh, you know, maintained and, uh, you know, sort of pipe in in crisis and, you know, deal with issues. Um, you know, that increasingly uh, is going away in our, our cloud, cloud native world. Um, and, um, you know, collectively, I think we all want to get to the other end of the rainbow. Um, but, uh, you know, I've been at this for now, you know, 25 years, uh, and I'm increasingly of the mind that, uh, you know, there is no other end of the rainbow that we're, uh, you know, only going to be uh, changing the wheels on the, 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 the car faster, more often, and, um, you know, probably we, we ought to get better at, uh, you know, doing, you know, sort of, uh, you know, live mechanics. Uh, you know, uh, rather than expecting that, uh, um, you know, think we're, we're going to get to uh, some, some perfect state. Um, I, I spent, uh, you know, five years, uh, you know, commercializing no death, uh, bringing, you know, what I thought we were, we were uh, you know, eventually bringing things into helping developers. Uh, I'm a developer, you know, solving developer problems. Uh, ultimately, uh, you know, once we got into, you know, quote unquote product market fit, um, the reality was we were serving operators. Folks didn't know how to run those systems and we were providing the, the tooling that um, enabled those uh, you know, operators, the individuals responsible for running, you know, these new uh, novel systems that, you know, hadn't existed and hadn't been run at scale before. Uh, and, you know, providing the, the, the tools that they needed uh, to uh, successfully operate. And, you know, I, I've come back to that premise, uh, you know, as, as I've, uh, you know, spoken to, to, to many uh, organizations recently that, uh, you know, mm, it, it, it is, uh, you know, I'm a developer, it is, uh, you know, developing the solution, uh, you know, really going to get us the outcome and, uh, you know, that we're looking for. Um, and, you know, even with, with our uh, sort of best, uh, you know, approach that we have today, uh, you know, around SRE, uh, yes, we're solving, you know, actively solving things, uh, problems with, with software, uh, you know, helping accelerate our, our systems. But ultimately, we're, we're putting, um, you know, experienced individuals that, that understand the, the subject matter, uh, you know, in the line of fire and, um, you know, uh, enabling 
uh, our system to operate successfully by essentially putting uh, operators in the mix uh, you know, who are uh, better equipped to uh, you know, deal with you know, the dy dynamic changes that we have in our cloud native system. So that's the premise. Uh, I, I'd love to get you know, your, your feedback on that and um, you know, uh, you know, see where we can draw some, some inspiration um, you know, uh, to, uh, to, to move that forward and uh, you know, also see if uh, you know, that's something that, that we collectively uh, are interested in spending um, you know, any, any of our cycles on. Um, you know, a lot of the folks that have uh, raised their hands to, um, you know, participate in, in the assessments are looking to, uh, you know, build their skill set and, and ramp up, uh, you know, uh, their understanding of, of how they can work more effectively in this cloud native ecosystem. So, you know, in a very, um, you know, uh, tangible, direct way, uh, we're helping support the operator, the security operators of this uh, cloud native ecosystem by the security assessment process that we're putting in place. Silence the crowd, Dan. <laughs> I guess I'll just add my two cents in. I think the operator framework or the operator model is actually good uh, from the perspective of it allows, if it's done properly, it allows you to bake in a lot of the security posture and security configurations into the configuration. Of course, part of the challenge is, is most of it becomes a black box. So you don't know if that's being done properly or not, but the idea behind operators is that you can have the people that have the expertise in MySQL or Kafka or whatever it might be, build in those best practices to make it much easier to run systems securely. I agree. Um, though I, I, I keep seeing, you know, especially on the, the, the business side of things, um, a desire to make those individuals go away or an expectation that, you know, we're going to AI our way out of it, uh, rather than, um, you know, proactively, um, you know, invest, like, what's the, you know, training curriculum that, you know, we would expect those individuals to have gone to uh, assert that they are a, um, a subject matter expert? That's you know a a simple question that I that I would ask um, you know in you know help, helping folks understand the, the role of operators. How do we validate that? I mean, I think things shift so much over time that, like, if you'd asked, you know, five years ago, what people doing this kind of work would be doing, and how. Like, you know, how, how would you train somebody to know how to use cloud that it's very different today. So I, I don't, I don't sort of know what that we're going to be able to come up with some meaningful prognostication about this. I, I think AI mm -hmm. and automation has made things that were hard easier, but it's typically done that for mechanical things so that you can have a single person be able to do more of something rather than not need that person anymore. Yeah, I agree with that. I think when people try to say they're going to automate away jobs, it's just besides like doesn't even, I don't even think it makes sense. It's like, I thought you're trying to do more, right? Most companies are trying mm -hmm. to grow. So it's more, I think if you think frame it as we're building tools to help people do even more with the who are already overworked, it's a better frame than thinking about getting rid of them. And I think that goes for operators as well, that, you know, we're giving them the tools to do their job more effectively, to run more services with fewer, you know, with fewer of them. What are the tools, just like what are the tools that developers need? What are the tools that the operators need to be able to do their jobs more effectively in the cloud native environment? How you doing? Pretty good. Yeah.
was trying to sit through this meeting and I'm like, ah. So I, yeah. I hate to monopolize this too much. Oh, uh, CMC. You know, reminded it, are talking about it's secrety. AI. There's a tendency to call this. I'm just going to talk over this person. The it's a tendency AI. to call this work oh, oh. infrastructure, yeah. which means the oh, like, people yeah. are responsible yeah. for. Cabell, yeah. do you want to mute yeah. somebody? Yeah. Cabell, it's going to happen. Security director happens for cars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't mute him. So good, Mark. To mute him either. Yeah, I was just going to say it's. Uh, the people that we call doing infrastructure now means, for example, the folks trying to implement uh, micro networks, you know, the smaller subnets of authorization and, you know, policy connected subnets is what used to be done by network engineers. And that was a clear, you know, that was your Cisco guys, your Palo Alto guys. Well, if that becomes software, there's a fusion that's happening here that is a force multiplier to use the DOD framing for this. And I think that does mean reduced headcount and because mm -hmm. yep. it, it's, uh, it now becomes a cross specialization. It's now Python skill plus networking skill. Um, <clears throat> and also it, if it becomes open source, it means you're not hiding behind a paywall to teach people how to do it. So I think there is a sort of democratization of infrastructure that will happen through cloud, um, but sort of the offsetting thing that's going to happen that I see in, on two fronts. One is the uh, sustainability metrics, which is kind of related to security, but not directly. But, you know, as we become, have corporate responsibility for power footprint for everything that we do, and, and also for measuring it, that becomes an IT, uh, you know, demand to produce real-time metrics for that sort of thing. And and to plan for it, that creates new demands on our infrastructure. So, so there is that pressure on it. And also I think there is a demand to move toward real time, which is sl a slow moving front, um, taking, moving things across right. sector by sector that's affecting, um, you know, every domain separately. Maybe medicine will be last in some respects and utilities might be first, I don't know. But uh, as we, you know, come to, encompass the implications of all that for security and manageability and costing, I think then infrastructure takes on a sort of a role closer to management than it used to be. So instead of the Cisco engineer, you now have, you know, a sustainability engineer, a reliability engineer mm -hmm. for, you know, top to bottom network resilience. So um, yeah, I do, I do think there's a force for headcount, like it or not. Um, but, yep. but I want to press you a little more on Dan. What you mean by the SMEs? Is it the SMEs for our traditional specialties? Is that what you have in mind? No, you know, I, I just you know the the, you know, the way that we value subject matter expertise and apply it. Uh, a lot of the you know sort of scale ways that we're uh, applying uh, subject matter expertise is uh, you know through. Uh, you know, what we keep calling AI, um, which, uh, you know, behind the scenes is often, you know, me mechanical Turk and, uh, you know, feeding in, um, you know, training into systems that we don't uh, fully understand to achieve the outcomes that uh, we we'd like to have. Um, so, you know, real boots on the ground uh, application things, you know, not, not the idealized uh, or, or perfect state. Um, and, uh, you know, that, uh, that workflow, that process, the flywheel, uh, you know, fundamentally, uh, is abstracting away the subject matter expertise, not distilling in, uh, subject matter expertise, uh, you know, based on, uh, years of experience, uh, you know, you mentioned, you know, the, those, uh, you know, trained and certified operators in, you know, kind of two generations ago uh, with our, our, our network operators, uh, you know, all of those folks to get to, uh, you know, um, be able to, to participate in the marketplace had to go through, uh, you know, extensive, expensive, uh, you know, training and certification to, you know, to do what they're doing. Um, and, you know, we kind of just flipped a bit and said, okay, great. 
uh, now that that's virtualized and uh, you know that expertise is really not needed. Um, you know, maybe if you get a little, get a little networking, maybe you get a little uh, Python. Uh, you know, off you go. Um, and you know, rather than saying, okay, wow, that was really hard. Um, and we probably don't understand all of the, you know, uh, the rough edges where we're gonna, you know, burn ourselves. Um, yeah, you know, and, uh, you know, that, that just will, will, uh, you know, hide pain that we're gonna, you know, get uh, in the future. Okay, that's clear. So a short thought about that is the flywheels are operating autonomously now inside the, the major vendor toolkits. So like the anti-phishing tools, there's a whole bunch of deep knowledge required mm -hmm. to use them. Same thing with the, uh, you know, the edge connect, you know, the edge, the edge tools, the, uh, the, the dark web intelligence tools, all of these things have their own sort of deep specialization stuff that is still there. So as you're writing APIs into these tools to do orchestration, you have to come to terms with pretty deep SMEs around that, some of which stays on the mm -hmm. vendor side, some of which gets brought into the institution. But, but, but still, I think you've got this, uh, the thing you're, you're tackling here, you've got this sort of uh, decentralization of that expertise mm -hmm. into a broader community, whether that's good or bad, that is going on, it's true. Right. You, you, you've also, in a sense, got a centralization of a lot of that stuff into cloud providers and other people providing services wholesale who will have, you know, will have whole teams who sit underneath those APIs and work out what the internals of the security model are in a, in a way that's actually very, uh, quite well hidden. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if you think about what's underneath, you know, the, the AWS API in terms of the number of security people working on it, so there's a lot of people in those teams. Right. You know, my go to use case for this is medicine, though, where where we all concede that we don't understand what a radiologist does looking at a mammogram. Right. So the way that a security engineer interfaces with a domain specific ecosystem, I think, is you know, the leading edge challenge of the SME in, you know, in the technology domains where this community on this phone call operates and the specialization in the healthcare ecosystem interact and that's that's a hard problem uh, which most people i think don't even accept as a problem yeah so mark you you worked uh with a, a framework that actually you know uh collides and, and coincides with uh our um you know former moniker uh you know called safe um, you know, that is, you know, kind of a very large structured process, uh, for, you know, beginning to, to look at that, um, that's, uh, you know, been in flight now for, um, you know, uh, several years, um, you know, would you mind just sort of, you know, describing SAFE and, you know, that framework and, you know, uh, if you could, you know, touch on, uh, you know, some of the challenges uh, that that uh, actually implementing that, um, you know, have have you, that you've encountered. Wow, I I need to do some more homework to put that presentation in a coherent okay. state. There's a there's an appendix in the uh, the last release of the report we worked on for that, which summarizes uh, three levels of sort of voluntary compliance to try to address that in security and privacy. Uh, that's, you know, we could walk through what it takes to try to do that. Um, you know, but I think this community on this call is more sophisticated than really that standard tried to tackle. Um, you know, for example, um, the ability to take, you know, an open stack like architecture and say, this is how I'm going to partition off classes of data and protect it uh, and how I'm going to, you know, control the anonymization algorithms that I'm using and how to try to defeat de-anonymization de -anonymization tooling. Uh, you know, this audience would get that. We don't really try to tackle that in, 
in that framework. You know, I could come back and talk about this, you know, at, at greater length if you like, but you know, the, the short version of this is that, you know, it's, we, we just conceived of three voluntary compliance levels that try to look increasingly deep at this intersection between domain specific and cross domain security apparatus to promote privacy and security um, across a bunch of sec segments, which we're all familiar with, you know, um, in, encryption, uh, trans transparency of, uh, of algorithms, um, adversarial testing, uh, automation, reduce cycle time for, um, for the, pr the promotion of, of code in order to sort of uh, stabilize the interaction between what we find in adversarial testing and uh, new product releases. You know, there, there are other facets to that that came up in this four-year effort to do this for the big data scenario. Um, you know, it'd be interesting to, you know, get the reaction of this group to it, but, you know, I would frame it differently if I knew this was going to be my audience as opposed to yeah. you know, people in the government looking sure. at, um, you know, it's at like the GSA level of how do you do this for agencies and how do you do this for a 20,000 employee company uh, where you have to deal with a lot of legacy code, you know, as well, as well as, um, you know, because, I think in cloud native gets to deal with a lot of greenfield and the yeah. greenfield luxury right. is not a common one mm -hmm. across our industry. Um, you yeah. know, even in, in telecom, there's a lot of, um, you know, for a lot of reasons, there's a lot of legacy stuff you have to work with and this constrains the way that you, that you architect systems. So the framework driven approach with, I know not everybody on this call is, is fond of, tends to work better in those places where the legacy stuff is all in the mix. It's, you know, everywhere you turn, there's something you, you don't have full control over. So you're, you know, you're controlling it through uh, controls as opposed to automation, which is kind of not where you want to get if you're developer centered. So right. I don't know, I'm kind of dodging your request, but I'd be happy to come back another time and talk about it. Cool. Uh, you know, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll put out a request for feedback um you know maybe you know sometime next month sounds like you know we'll we'll, we'll require you know a little little bit of thought and a little bit of prep um i you know uh we discussed earlier you know the you know the, the positive impact of subject matter experts in silos um you know we you know as uh the security sig inside the cncf are inherently that um you know now uh, the, you know, we, we were sort of the, uh, guinea pig for, uh, SIGs, uh, now that, that SIG workflow in, uh, the CNCF is really, uh, beginning to hit its stride and, um, you know, kind of our next challenge, uh, you know, since we've, uh, you know, been able to, to invest so much in, in our, uh, internal process is now, uh, you know, uh, beginning to, to, to take and, uh, you know, take our learnings and collaborate with the other SIGs and, and get better uh, at that sort of looking out, out of, outside of our, our world. And, and Mark, you know, that the, those formal efforts that, um, you know, really document all of those interaction points and, and at, at rough edges, um, I, I think might help us inform, um, you know, uh, some of those things where, uh, you know, we, we, we might not know uh, what we don't know and, uh, you know, and, and need uh, to draw on, uh, you know, other insights to, to do, uh, do that better. Um, and, 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 and that your, your comment on, on Greenfields um, is, uh, you know, I, I think one of the, the main um, actual reasons why we, we uh, see so much, you know, acceleration in, uh, in in this field in this area, um, because we you know have the uh, the privilege of, of going in and and working in green fields and uh, have gotten that um, you know uh, time under fire and uh, you know the ability to, to just you know really map that particular route out well, um, but uh, you know then we got to integrate it with everybody else, build consensus. Uh, figure out how uh, it fits. Is this cloud native or not? 
Um, you know, there's a lot of fit up work that uh, we all collectively have to do um, to come out the other end uh, that, you know, not just our, uh, you know, our, our subgroup, uh, but the overall collective, uh, you know, remains co coherent, remains valuable, uh, and, you know, is truly a benefit to the broader ecosystem. Yeah, I understood. All right. Well, uh, I feel like I've uh, probably beaten that one as uh, much as I uh, I can for this session. Uh, you know, thanks for uh, the input, and you know, I'd love to uh, to hear your thoughts. I'd love to to, to get feedback on uh, you know whether uh, you know we'd like to drive into the you know uh, to safe as uh, uh, you know potential. Uh, uh, process that we can draw inspiration from uh so, so we can you know begin to inform ourselves on uh how how we can integrate uh the work that we're doing here in sig security into the the rest of the ecosystem uh you know make it usable make it uh, approachable and you know make it something that uh you know folks are uh you know one, one of the main inspirations that uh jj sarah and i uh you know had when we you know got together to, to to kick off this thing uh is really uh making security uh you know a first class citizen and the default uh and i, I still think we have a, a fair amount of work to do uh to get to that and you know uh a lot of that work is going to be uh fit up and you know helping folks manage their expectations uh you know with the other parts of the ecosystem not just uh, through our um, individual and collective subject matter expertise. All right, so uh, end it with that. Uh, any other closing thoughts or call outs that the folks need? Uh, if not, uh, we'll give you all uh, a few more minutes back in your day. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one. See you next week. Take care. Ciao.